So, the grand wish bag. Boom. That's where we're going to start. I call this wish bag because I got it off wish. Yeah. And normally I have this tied up here. Poop. But I've unhooked that already. <laughs> it goes right across here and holds all this on. So, I learned a long time ago. Pack the stuff you need handy. This little bag is pretty good. I can put it on my waist. I can put it on my sissy bag. I can put it on my forks. I can... Drop it straight in my saddle bag if I want to. So, this is my wish bag. We're going to go with my wish bag. I like to pack things as we go. So they're easy to get to. The things I use first. I'm going to grab a rag here. Flop the counter off a little bit. Okay. Now, pack stuff as you go. This is a placemat. You can get them and everything from silicone. This one's bamboo. And the reason I carry this is because when you get where you're going... You don't want to set everything on a nasty old ground. You just set that down. It's easy to wipe off. If you get the silicones, you can use it like a cutting board. Right? Speaking of cutting boards, the next thing you will need is a knife. And this little bag, as you can tell, it's got a little place to slip stuff in. I can just pull my little knife out. Poop. Cut what I need to. And I normally use my, the back of my plate as a cutting board. It's a metal plate. It works good. Uh... It's in yonder with my food on it. So anyway, we'll go with over that later. So, like I said, you pack stuff, you can get too easy. This little pocket right here has my lotions, my shampoo, all that in it. This bag has not only my food and my cleaning supplies, but my hygiene. Because like I said, it's easy to get to. And even if I'm not going camping, I know I might be gone for a little while here or there. I can still throw this on my bike and take it with me in case I want coffee or something. I don't have a booze house, I want coffee. So, let's turn the bag around. Yeah, as you can tell, the way it opens up, this is the front of the fork, I can open it this way. Biodegradable soap. I have this. I also have dishwasher soap, which is biodegradable. But I keep that. You know, wash your hands, get everything clean first. And of course, the most important thing coffee. I don't always pack a big thing of coffee, but this is enough. I just kind of, this is my go-to. You know what I mean? There's probably enough there to make at least two pots of regular coffee, but the way I make it, probably a lot more than that. So, we have to have a stove. Now, I don't know if I've done a video. I've done a video on this. I haven't edited or uploaded it yet with me and my son when we made this. Now, what I've done... In case you can't tell it's a beer can and a monster can and this is what they call an alcohol stove you pour alcohol in it you light it the center of it will flame and the whole thing will flame up once it gets warm it starts evaporating the alcohol whether it's heat or isopropyl alcohol you put your pot on it all of a sudden those little holes in there turn into torches easy to carry it weighs absolutely nothing as you can imagine uh, I added a wick around the outside and brought this up a little bit to act as a wind barrier, kind of. It works really good. Um, about an ounce of fuel is all you need to get the water right to boiling. Two ounces will actually boil the water in about six minutes. It works really good. I just put the lid on it because it looks cool that way. Uh, you got to have that, of course. And a way to measure your fuel. And this is a shot glass. It's a one ounce shot glass. One ounce at a time or a half ounce. It's got markings on the side. That way I can measure my fuel in there depending on what kind of fuel I'm using. And then you got to have a way to cook. I've turned this into a French press. As you can tell with this little booger handle right here. But the cat, and there's videos on how to do this. This is just a $3 cut from Walmart. Stainless steel or good. Of course my shot glass, this is my food shot glass. It's rubber and it's easily cleaned. It's easily done. Not a problem. <laughs> my stirring spoon, and I've set that down a lot of times, but my other spoon I'm using on that. And then, of course, the French press. Boom. Now, that's all sweet and good for making coffee, and I can use this as a strainer once I do like rice or noodles in there. Put that there, and there's holes in the top, and strain my water. So we gotta have that. Let's look that over here. Okay. 
And when I ain't using that, I'm just blowing something I don't need to strain. Just a regular lid my son made me out of a uh, roof blasting. Nothing fancy. Got a little handle on it. Put that on top of the lid and I can cook it off. Now, just like when you're in the kitchen, you need a sink. This is a bladder. A three liter bladder. It has a hook on it right here. And what I normally do is fill this up with water when I get where I'm going and hang it in a tree near where I'm cooking. Just for right now, we're going to set it right up here. You see? And what you do is you turn your little switch on, take this off, turn your little switch on, squeeze it, and it squirts water. And you can use this as a shower or a witch cotton. If you let it set the sun long enough, it'll heat the water up, as you can imagine, and you got hot water. So as you're cooking, there's your hot water. So we'll just set that right there for a minute. Okay, and that's all that's in the center here, pretty much. Now, in the top, in my grand top of my wish bag, I have a few things that are kind of vital that I can open up. And do. You always need rags, whether it's a wash rag or a dish rag. Now, I do got zip on bags. You always need some kind of light. I've got a headlamp that's charged inside it and got it in here right now, but you always need a light. Of some sort. Of some sort. Just in case. Uh, my spoons and forks, of course. I've had this since the Boy Scout days, I think. Uh, it's just a little stainless steel knife, fork, and spoon. And a lot of people will tell you use this and that for a weight. But I've got another little set, which is just a spork on one end and a fork on the other that I carry sometimes if I'm actually hiking, but I don't hike too much. Of course, I got a poncho, some emergency scissors, some emergency cam lights in case I need them. And that's what I keep in the top of my pack. That way everything's piled right there, like I said. I guess I probably should put my soap up here. I ain't sure it'll fit with it. ain't gonna fit there. I feel like I keep it down there. Uh, but it's everything's right here. Like I said, my knife pad everything's right here at the top so when I get where I'm going after I get my tarp or tent or whatever set up or if it's clear tonight just cowboy camping out get everything set up and figure out where I'm going to sleep or if I just want to make coffee it's all right here so I said in the middle the center is the most important stuff then on the ends I have all kind of other little stuff a little bowl for mixing sauces mixing whatever my backup coffee, which is coffee grinds. My spices. And that's all that's in that pocket. Nope. Well, I ain't gonna show you what that is. That's just an extra rag. <laughs> then on this end, <coughs> I have, you know, things I might need. My tool, which is for camping, or it's got a hammer. It's a little multi-tool that I carry. And some biodegradable tool paper. You always need that. And some hand sanitizer, which I've got in yonder. I was refilling it. I buy the little bottles, and then I take and fill the big bottles up with little things. Uh, that's what's in that side. And as you can tell, I've got that one. I've got these. And then in the front, of course, I've got my shampoo, my dishwashing liquid, my lotion, all that. Uh, I normally keep a towel in a big Ziploc bag somewhere handy. Uh, sometimes I'll put it in here, you know, tie it on. Sometimes I'll just keep a handle where I can get to it. So, anyway, that's what we're going to need to cook. As we go through this process and do these videos, you're going to see recipes and stuff. In the wild, I cook with this. We will not be using this too much because I'm indoors. Uh, I do have videos showing you I have used this, and I'll put those videos up. I'll link to them. Uh, Prepare some videos mostly of the actual butane burners you can buy in this. Okay. So, I guess the biggest thing is, when you're out on the trail, you don't want to always be the same thing. You know, uh, these get old after a while. They really get old. So in this video, the essentials. The biggest part of the essentials are your spices. 
Now, I don't know what you say. That one says basil, that's the paprika. As you can tell, that's not paprika. Okay? And that's surely not basil. If you smell it, you'll know. So, anyway, let me put some of this. Well, I'll wait to put that up to you. When you're on the trail, you want things to taste different. Right? So, this is what I call essence. It is a, a blend of spices. Basil, oregano, um, paprika. Oh, God, it's got all kinds of things. I'll give you a full recipe, but it's got all the spices I want in it. A little bit of sea salt, just a little bit, because this is salt and pepper is what this is. Sometimes you don't want all the spices, depending. Sometimes you just want salt and pepper. <laughs> and... I make my essence. It's got some wild onions in it that I've dried out. It's got some peppers I've dried out from my garden, different other things. That's essential. Because like I said, you don't want to eat for just plain food. Sometimes, yeah, I grow a garden. Sometimes when you go to restock, you might find a little farmer's market. You might find whatever. And certain things like this go a long way. It's self-contained. And if you do it right, you can freeze it or preserve it or do all kinds of stuff. Of course, once you cut it, it will wilt fast. So there's different ways you can do stuff. Lemon juice helps with apples, helps with fruit. A little bit of citrus never hurt anybody. Plus, you know, you can carry it in a little bottle. Uh, let's see if I got my citrus in here. I didn't even know that. Uh, I don't know where I put my citrus. My citrus I keep in a little... A little bottle about like this. Uh, but you can buy the citrus. You can buy all kinds of stuff. Uh, that'll give you just a little bit of flavor. And I got a lot of people kept out with me that dying to get their hands on this. And I don't measure a lot of stuff. My mama taught me when you cook, you cook with love. And you can't measure love. So, you know, a dab, a pinch, this and that. So, this is my essence. Bam! Like Bam says, essence. Uh... A lot of times, when you're going somewhere, you know, you got to restock and refuel, and you don't have a lot of room. Therefore, we're just going to imagine this right here is a gas station. When you pull in your little gas station, boom, 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 you might have to go into gas. Or if you're on a trail, you might have to refuel. And there's towns around the AT, around different places. And you can send yourself packs and everything else. But when you get to the gas station, they always have little things. Ketchup. Hot sauce, Taco Bell hot sauce, mustard, mayonnaise, tartar sauce. You know, when you go in, they got little things of salt and pepper. You can refuel stuff. I mean, just don't get greedy and grab butts. This is what I've had over time. <coughs> I've got jelly. You know, in case you want peanut butter and jelly. And I've got the little packs. You know, just if you run out of salt, grab a little, ask them. Cast some salt, cast some ketchup. Get, just get a couple extras. Hot sauce, if you like, you know, South, uh, what do they call it? Tex Mex. This comes in handy when making a lot of sauces. That's what I use this little bowl for. And y'all will see me using that bowl. It's a little bitty bowl. Y'all will see me using it for all kind of good things. Like whenever I cook something to add in because I cook, I like to layer my flavors. So what I'll do is I'll cook something, put it in this bowl, and then cook something else. And then when it's done, it's a process. Because, like I said, when you're cooking, you can't measure love. Um, you really can't measure love. So, I like to make layers. And anybody take my cooking, I'll tell you, there's layers. Uh, I don't like to overcook stuff. Uh, a lot of the stuff we are going to be cooking uses sauces and water to kind of enhance simple things like oatmeal. Or ramen noodles or you know oatmeal ramen noodles instant mashed potatoes uh, you can buy this other stuff but I mean to carry most of it in a ziploc bag I normally keep all my food on the high side of my saddle bag that way I know it stays dry I put it in a compactor bag it's in ziploc bags too but it's on the high side because the way that I camp I have to make a lean to on the bike I know it stays dry if I have to reach up, if it's raining, I have to reach up, I can get right in my saddlebag underneath my lean-to, get everything out, pal. This goes in the tent or lean-to with me, 
Of course, my packs go in the vestibule or in their own little pack. I've got a tarp for them. Uh, the biggest thing, when you go to a gas station, you go anywhere, you got to buy a fuel. This thing does run off fuel. You can buy the heat. You can buy the 90% hydropropyl alcohol, which takes a little bit more. Uh, when you go into town, you know, you, you will learn and you will find stuff. Uh, most of the time, you'll get bags of tuna. If you get a can of tuna, save the can. Rinse it out, save it. You can use it for something. Uh, if nothing else, use it as a perimeter. Take you some string, tie the tuna cans to it, put it around your thing. It'll make noise, keep the animals away at night. Um, you know, you don't want a lot of weight, so I wouldn't advise doing a lot of that. But, you know, two little tuna cans smacking against each other will scare the hell out of a bear. Um, pretty much, like I said, this is what we use. Anything you can get fresh. On the AT, in a lot of places you go, you talk to the local people. And there's co-ops and everything else. You can stop and say, hey, if, you know, this Saturday, they say, go out there in the garden and pick something. And whenever you've been eating ramen noodles for two weeks, this right here adds a whole lot of flavor to it. A lot of flavor. So, I think I've covered the, the very first part of what we'll need and what we're going to be using. Uh, all y'all's equipment will vary. It will vary. So, whatever works for you, we're just going to do a little bit of recipes and stuff. And this is what we're going to be using.